how's everyone doing? Doing good, thank you. Cool. Yeah. Uh, let let let's start then. Let me share my screen. So uh, previously, yesterday, or oh, actually a week ago, we finished with uh, the merge conflict, and I promised you that I will demonstrate proper way of fixing merge conflicts, how to how how to work with them, how how to solve them, and that's then that's that's what that's what we'll do today. So we had a pull request. Uh, and it says there is a merge conflict in main.tf. We could go here and attempt to uh, somehow correct this, but that's not uh, actually the, that that's not the best way of uh, solving the uh, of solving the issue. So uh, basically, what we need to do is how uh, at least how I usually do this. I do this through interactive rebase. So what is rebase? So let me let me let me first show it uh, uh, on um, create a diagram and visualize it for you. So what can you tell me what is the what is the commit what is uh what is git commit uh what what it is like in in simple words if we were to explain it what it contains what information it has it contains all the changes we have made in that repository local to our machine Mm -hmm. Okay, changes. And what else? Changes from what? Uh, changes from the previous copy we kind yes. of pulled. Exactly, that's right. That's right. It contains a reference. Uh, contains a reference to the previous commit and a, a difference between between the between this commit and the commit it is referencing and in fact our git history if we look at it from this point of view is a chain of commits and each commit is referencing the previous one and containing information about what was changed since uh, since the previous commit right and let me properly name it it will be commit c commit d and commit b okay and i previously showed you the git div command right do you guys remember what it is doing Uh, it is kind of providing the difference in like the previous commits we pull, like or from where like we get the main uh, the yes. source. That's right. And also, div can be used to show the difference, for example, between not only between your current state and uh, the latest commit, but for example, between the latest commit and one commit from latest. Yeah, here is. We, we can check what has changed in, in, in between these two commits, right? And now, can you tell me what will happen when we create a branch? So probably, let's say, let's imagine uh, when we were here. Uh, let's let's cover up this. So we don't have this yet. Imagine we don't have this yet. Let's say we created a branch, right? It's just it's nothing but uh, alternative commit uh, that that is based on this commit. And when we add commit uh, on top of this commit, 
into this branch, they are referencing this commit, uh, this previous commit that way. C2. C3 and so on, right? And when we do pull request, basically we are sending these changes, we are integrating these changes back to our main branch, right? Like this. And um, here is where potential, uh, potential uh, opportunity for merge, um, the merge conflicts happening, right? When we edit one and the same file uh, from, diff from different branches, uh, we uh, Git by itself is not able to make a decision about which version is right and which version is wrong, which version is most recent, which version is the, the least recent. That's why we, we need an opportunity for Git to provide, uh, to explicit, so we, we, we should be able to explicitly tell Git which versions are right. And here is what we will be doing. So basically, uh, rebase is when we are going back into Git history and switching our initial dependency, this initial chain. So basically, this C1 commit has commit C as a base. This commit C has commit B as a base. So in case of using rebase, we are switching the base and moving it first to this commit, after that to, to that commit, right? And moving our history kind of forward. And at the same time, when it notices a, a conflict, it allows us to, uh, to resolve them. It says, I don't know what version of the code should be there. Please resolve that for me. Alternative to rebase is merge, but I don't really like doing merge in order to resolve conflicts. Why? Because it's uh, it is producing a less clean history. So in case of merge, instead of simply changing this reference, what it will do is that it will take a copy of this commit it will take a copy of this commit and pull it into into this chain so you you basically have let me how to demonstrate it better one second you basically have something like that uh, a mix of commits from your branch, from your changes that you've made, and commits that someone else did. It will also ask you to resolve these conflicts, but instead of having this, preserving this clear history over here, it will give you this, I would say, mixed of your own commits that you've made and commits that, 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 that's been made to a branch that you've created previously and uh, uh, commits of other people who might have worked with you on the project so i strongly recommend doing rebase when you need to solve a merge conflict and let me show you how to obviously how to obviously do this so i have these branch variables i need to take the latest changes from main as usual I need to check out back to my branch and run simple command git rebase main. And that's exactly what, uh, what we need to see. It says conflict, merge conflict in main.cf. Uh, sometimes we have more than one file. In this case, it will say merge conflict in multiple files and we can always run git status and it will show us both modified and the list of files that are in question. 
what we need to do next is open our code editor. No, that's not a code editor. This is my code editor. And basically, it, it, it is highlighting what we should have changed. Uh, current change, incoming change, both changes or compare them. So this one looks a little bit weird. It's uh, actually too much, but um, usually in most cases, it is um, much smaller chunks of uh, commits to resolve. So let me let me let me go through this and see the difference. So public, private. So no, route table public. Yeah. So and the difference is that in this current change, what we had in uh, e, we we have no tags for for example for route table or for Elastic IP, and in this version we have tags everywhere for each and every resource. So basically, we mean these the one called incoming change. We can just press this button, accept incoming change. Save it. After that, we get back to uh, to Git. Run Git status. Git add main tf and Git rebase minus minus continue. And save it. After that, we can push it using minus four flag. And when we get back to our branch. when we get back to our pull request it no longer says that we have a merge conflict now it highlights all latest and greatest code without uh, any conflicts with main and basically we can merge it and uh, let's dedicate the rest of the session to some git magic as well i will demonstrate you a couple more tricks that i that i usually do um, that that will help you to be productive and have your git history clear and beautiful so let's let's create let's let's create one more branch not minus b and uh, git demo Let's imagine we have a situation, right? Uh, we are re we are working on some new feature. To simplify, uh, I will just use Markdown file. Let's say we created our initial code. Uh, let's save this file and commit it. Uh, let's assume that I know you know what no it it is better to uh, to have real terraform. Let's say we want to create one more VPC, but imagine we forgot to add something like like that. What will happen when we run Terraform apply? Uh, it will fail. Yes, completely right. Let's try this. Terraform. OK. It says main was already declared. Uh, some stranger. Assume it is str it's, it's a stranger. The error 
itself doesn't matter here. We need to do something to fix it, right? Probably, I don't know, we I believe we forgot to put something like that, CIDR block, right? And also I will I will intentionally make one more error here. How should we call it? Uh, how should we call it? How should we call the commit with this fix? Probably, I don't know, fix new VPC. Right? Let's try Terraform apply again. Still doesn't help, right? And probably, uh, who who can tell me exactly what's what's the error? What's the reason we're getting this error? So uh, the name main is uh, in another folder or file. Exactly. Yeah. Previous task. A plus. Thank you, Mohamed. Let's remind. Let's remind it. Second, secondary. Hit add feature tf, hit commit, and then um, who, who can give me an idea how to, what what should we write? What descriptive name should we write for, for this commit, for our second attempt to fix this? Correct. Uh, VPC resource name. And probably you are starting to getting this feeling this temptation to have something like either just like this or some garbage like this, right? Because it's difficult to come up with a descriptive name for each attempt to fix the issue again, again, and again. Agree? Yes. Okay, very good. Right, let's try Terraform apply again. You will have some error, right? And this troubleshooting process can take uh, like a really huge amount of iterations, right? You might want to try, I don't know, dozens of different configurations, different changes. And this will even become worse when you mm, when you have to push the to the to the CI system. Should we add the file before testing it? Uh, no, uh, unfortunately. Um, let me explain you this. So, in, in, in to to my point about CI systems, Jenkins. If we want to apply something through Jenkins, for example, we have a company where we are not allowed to run Terraform apply directly. We have to commit each time again and again. Right, and only after that Jenkins will pick up and apply these changes. This means we always have to to try something. We need to make a commit. We need to have this committed. So, um, one second, let me bring up something. Perhaps you've seen this funny picture. Let me demonstrate it for you. This one, right? So first we write descriptive and good names, right? After that we forgot the what we have changed, for example, right? And finally we are we are losing track of our attempts to fix issues and fix the fix things. And basically this is the situation where we're now, right? And when you see something. Uh, something like that, for example, in uh, in the code of your colleague or in any of your repositories, this means you need to restructure this. And here is where interactive rebase comes to our rescue. So first, let's let's fix the the issue, right? Let me get back it like this. Make one more commit. And I will purposely make it extremely undescriptive. 
and let's have a look at our, at our git history uh, so we have at one more vpc fix new vpc correct vpc resource name and this garbage commit that we don't remember what it was right so what you think we can do with this git history to make it better to make it more beautiful no ideas no suggestions could, could we edit the commit line like uh, the message that we did or uh, once again uh, can we edit like what we have already commented there we can get back in in our git history and and rewrite it we can rewrite our commits we can combine them already existing commits yes merge commit into one commit but this is called squash we can squash commits and to squash them we need to run git rebase uh, minus i this stands for interactive rebase it will give us the history of commits and ask us what we should do what we should do with our history we can either pick it means leave it as is we can reward this means we can change the commit name or we can squash uh, to start with let's pick the uh, this wrong name right i will change in this editor to the letter r it will open any editor that set as default if you have for example windows machine and notepad it will open it in notepad for me i have vim it it is opening it in vim we can just reward it uh, we can write the proper name to it let's say fix vpc CIDR variable uh, and it will ask me to provide this name one more time i will save and exit and provide additional one more time descriptive name write it from scratch fix epc EIDR, variable name and save it again and when we run git log one more time this commit is now with the new name however yeah as i mentioned we need to squash them because technically all these four commits correspond to only single feature right that's just different attempts to make it work and when a reviewer comes and checks our commit history he is not actually interested in what we've tried and how it works or not he, the teammates will be interested in the end result this means one i would say structural and meaningful change should correspond to one commit but not like one attempt to fix a missing comma somewhere right we can run git rebase again for now we will take these three commits and squash them into into single one and to squash we need to specify uh in 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 this part where it says pick either the word squash or just letter s so commits are always all, all all the commits are always squashed with the base so this one will be squashed with this one after that this one these two will be squashed with this one and all these three essentially will be squashed to this one David and it will ask us again to edit the commit message so we need to delete these three commit messages only this one will remain it and now we when we run git log we can only see this this commit which is actually right which is exactly right exactly that we want to see without any garbage that we've produced earlier so we clean up we've cleaned up our commit history uh, and 
but also we don't have to um, we don't have to always keep squashing them. Let's say we want to edit once again, right? We've committed something and we realize that we want to add some fixes on top of this. We can run git commit at with the minus minus amend flag. And what it will do is literally amend the previous existing commit. And instead of creating one more commit on top of it, it will just update the previous one. Sorry, it's amend with, with a single M. And when we run git log, the commit is still there, only one, but changes recorded directly inside this commit. So very useful feature. So when you try different things, attempt to fix it, instead of even committing them directly, and after that squashing, you can just always use amend, right? And uh, you can use rebase and squash only when you, for example, later decided that you want to reshuffle it even more or squash it even more or use any other features. Or for example, let's uh, let's say we added some some additional uh, some additional I don't know comment some unneeded and obvious comment right and and let's say we decided save it as a separate commit right. That and need it. Okay. And let's imagine for for the situation. I uh, assume I sent it for review, and let's say Geoffrey said, "Why do we need this command?" Right? Why do we need this line? It is obvious and unneeded. Please remove it. How would we do this from the Git point of view? What can we what can we do to remove this but keep our Git history in uh, look pretty without any garbage records in the Git history? So the obvious solution is just to remove this and Git commit again, right? But what other things can we do? How can we? Uh, let me even initiate the base again. So have a look into these options, guys, uh, and uh, tell me what what feature, what option can we can we take advantage of in this case, where we need to delete something that was recorded as a separate commit. Can we drop the commit and then uh, amend uh, the previous commit? Yes, that's right. We need to drop the commit. We can remove the entire commit from our history and all changes will go away. And we don't even have to amend any previous commits. Why? Because they contain what we need. All the, all the, on the, all the bad changes are bound to this commit over here, right? Add unneeded commit. We can just simply, yes, we can we can just drop it using the letter D. And if we get back to our ah, really? Okay. I have hold on a second. I forgot looks like I forgot to commit the, uh, the my amend, uh, but never mind. You see these I needed uh, uh, an obvious line went away, and when we run git log. Instead of having commit that adds this and then having commit that removes this, we just have uh, one descriptive proper line uh, that 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 should be there. Okay, so what what other options can we can we have? Um,
For example, sometimes we can edit the commit. And by editing, it means, let's say mm, we, let's add something else. Let it be a subnet. And uh, VPC ID will be, uh, will be secondary and CIDR block will be public header at, let's say one. We are making one more commit. And certainly let's say we decided that we want to get back and make some changes into our VPC, right? So let's say add, again, add text. Let's commit this again. And and add let run git log. So what what problem do we do we see here? So technically it's all good. Yes, we can we can have it like that. Uh, but if we do make it ideal and uh, as clear history as possible, most likely we would like to have changes that we recorded here as part of this commit because in this commit we've added our VPC. Right. So in, let, let me draw. Let me then drop this commit and show you how can we, uh, what can we do. Uh, so making our changes one more time. Uh, no, hold on a second. No. First we, first, we need to start rebase. We can switch into the edit mode here. It will start the rebase session. And currently, it is asking us how should we change the state uh, of our uh, commit that was back then, the previous commit. How should we change our previous commit? And we can add this, this text here. We can add this file here and press git rebase minus continue. It, say, it is asking us uh, what name should we have for this initial commit. And we need to also, maybe we will resolve. We will need to resolve a conflict. Is it give? Yes, it is giving us a conflict. Now it is much more descriptive, right? So what we have here is our current change, right? What's we added, and what's what we have on top of this commit um, that was in this in the next commit, right? So in this case, we need to accept so uh, kind of accept both changes. We need to tell them that we need to have both what we've added and what we had before yeah like this very good so uh, if you if you haven't started using vs code please do it is having this neat feature of uh, automatically highlighting this merge conflict so you don't have to like remove these lines manually and uh, it, it, there will be minimized chance of you getting messed up with, with these, uh, I would say, system lines from Git. So instead of just manually removing and adding this, you can just press accept incoming change, accept current change, or accept both. We are saving this. We are adding this. it. And we are writing git rebase minus minus continue and saving it. That's it. So this is extremely useful when we, for example, need to wipe out uh, some 
sensitive data, right? Let's say we committed a password like seven commits ago, right? And we need to completely remove it from our Git history. So in this case, you can locate the commit where you've made this mistake, edit it, and uh, and basically have it not only removed from the latest tree, but directly from uh, from the commit where it was introduced. Yeah, let me let me demonstrate it one more, one more time so it makes sense. Let's say we have locals. Password password one three four five six seven eight nine. Like that. Introduce secret password. Let's say after that we've decided to add some, I don't know, some more changes, like a couple more resources. And after that, we've decided like, oh, oh my God, we have the secret password uh, stored in our Git. We decided to remove that. Assuming we don't know, and uh, assuming we don't know yet, and assuming we haven't yet uh, saw this uh, this session and not aware that it will it will still be preserved in the history, we just removing it. Git status. Uh, git add feature tf git commit minus m uh, urgent uh, remove password but let me tell you let me push this and, and show it um, what will happen in the meantime can anybody tell me why we should not store passwords access keys any any tokens in git It is publicly available, and anybody will be able to like ac have access to our environment. Yes, exactly. So uh, there are uh, right now. It's not the case, but for example, like five years ago, there was uh, there were there were a lot of cases when, for example, people accidentally commit access keys and secret keys from Amazon to Git. Right? They are writing some Terraform. They are hard coding access key secret key directly into Git repo instead of using profiles and or credential files, and there there were some uh, bots uh, crawling GitHub searching for these credentials. Immediately after this is happening, hackers pick up these credentials, attempt to log in and spin up instances and starting mining bitcoins on your behalf, and people get bills of like up to fifty thousand of dollars simply by accidentally exposing their credentials but let me show you what will be what we will see in our you know in, in our github yeah assuming we've made this mistake assuming we have our credentials leaked i have a branch right when i see when i look here uh there is there is nothing like all clear but if we get back to the previous commit right here it is there is a beautiful concise diff that highlights what was our password right so this means we can what we can do so let's just um let, let's just drop this because it doesn't make sense Let's rebase again. Uh, introduce secret password, right? So we can edit this. And it will re revert our state to what was there when we made this comment. And let's say instead of hard coding it directly, we will use, let's say, variable. After that, we are adding.
and continue on our rebase. We don't have to commit again because commit all, was already created. We are just editing it through, through rebase. And to finalize rebase operation, there is always git rebase minus minus continue. And it will most likely ask us to resolve merge conflicts again. And uh, in this case, we kind of need to accept both changes, but after that, edit it a little bit, remove this one, right? So oh, you might you might be asked to do um, to solve conflicts multiple times. Why it is that? Because um, let's get back to our diagram where it is. Because each Git rebase continue, each successful rebase moves your base only one commit. And if you have more than one commit, it you will need to repeat this again and again. So if you think it is not working, it is always asking you for to make a rebase, check out this line, check out which commit you are rebasing. And if it's different from the previous one, this means you're making progress. That This means everything is actually working. It's status, git add feature.tf. Let me make sure that we've changed everything as intended. Git commit. Uh, uh, no, we need. We don't need commit. Git rebase minus minus continue. And when we git push, um, if we rebase something, it will not allow us to push it. Because it, we will need to overwrite our previous commit as well using minus minus force option. Here it is. And when we get back here, let me. I'm curious what will happen when I refresh. Very interesting. This commit doesn't belong to any branch in this repository. It belongs to outside repository. Yeah. Basically, let's get back to branch. Uh, this one. And let's check our commit uh, history. One second, 11 commits. And when we go to introduce secret password, now you see that the original password that we accidentally put completely removed. It's no longer in our commit history. And there are no commits that contain the secret password. And that's what should we do when we have to like completely remove anything from Git. And these, these options, these tricks will allow you to be more productive and preserve your Git history in a more clear and concise way. So the commands that you need to know is git rebase minus i minus like four, for example, means interactive base of last commits. You can re you can change this value to like seven, six, or whatever. So that's the amount of history uh, records that you can alter. So you can uh, let me let me show it once again. And some useful comments that that I usually use. There are significantly more. I'm not I'm not that great at rebate myself. I don't use all of them. Uh, how to copy in Vim? Uh,
on a full. So the options that I usually use are pick, uh, reward, edit, squash. I don't usually use fix up or edit. And drop. And another very useful feature is git commit minus minus amend. This means instead of adding additional commit, amend the previous one. Useful when we fixing something and need to make a fast change. And also git rebase main. Uh, that um, rebase your main branch usually needed and useful when useful when you need to solve merge conflicts. Okie dokie. And let me share this as a note into our into our shared chat. Uh, okay, dokie, here it is. So that's probably it. That's everything that I wanted to share for today. And um, let's let's leave some room for for just for just discussing things. Uh, do you guys have any questions? How difficult it was. Uh, I know that rebase is a very complicated topic. Uh, does it make at least some sense or, 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 not, or, or not really? Uh, I could understand a little bit, but I'll have to test it on my own to understand more. But I can, I, I understood like how to use the commands and I will be able to reproduce mm -hmm. that myself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to better understand this, I suggest that you mm, just don't use the, the, co the comments itself, but simply open the video of this lecture, of this session when it is available, and try repeating the same, the same case, repeating the same situation, like how do you remove the commit, how do you change the commit name, how do you edit the commit that was done back, uh, back then. And yes, to get comfortable with it, you need to try this at least a couple of times. But once you master these things, you are literally like unstoppable superhero in Git. And I will tell you even further, even experienced engineers, even ones who work in, in Facebook and, and Netflix sometimes don't know these things. And they even bragged about this, that they don't, not familiar with git and take a look at my git history uh, I, I i'm not i'm not doing any uh, amends or, or or squashes or whatever okay yeah very good idea to tr to watch the video and try it again and yeah the topic is a little complicated and i'm i'm sorry i was trying to make it more clear but again that's you you need to try this and probably the home task i will not overload you like with terraform you will not have to create any pull requests for for this time but let's have it two parts if you haven't yet completed previous tasks yeah take uh, take your time to complete this and also uh, on your side practice uh, practice these steps changing commit message deleting your commit squashing multiple commits into into one uh, or adding uh, or somehow editing your commit history that 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 will be it
Okay, so if we don't have anything else to discuss, I give you thumbs up for visiting the session. Uh, thank you guys for staying motivated. And yeah, talk to you next Thursday.